Stop Melgene Bottom Sea Ruin. Northwest, 300 kilometers away from Sea Town, Alison. It was the location of one of the seven great dungeon, Melgene Bottom Sea Ruin, that the party once heard from Mildy Ryzen. However, the party didn't have much time to listen to Mildy at that time, so she only told them that the moon must be accompanied by Guru Uen's proof without the detailed location, and so Hajimi's party only advanced through the vast ocean in accordance to the direction and distance they were told. However, they didn't find anything when they searched the pointed location in the bottom of the sea during daytime. The party had thought they'd be able to find some kind of trace because it was a bottom sea ruin, but it seemed they were too naive. The pointed location was rather shallow compared to the other place in circumference of 100 kilometers, so it must be the correct place. That was what Hajimi thought reluctantly. The party decided to stop the search and wait until night, when the moon has come out, as Mildy had told them. The current time was sunset. The sun was shining in red with half of itself hidden beyond the horizon, brightening the world for the last time today. The sky and sea were dyed in orange while a straight road was produced by the reflection of the sun on the sea from over the horizon a beautiful spectacle of nature no matter whichever world it was. Hajimi was watching the setting sun on the deck of the moored submarine. Abruptly, he thought of something unbelievable, which was whether it was possible to return to Japan if he advances on the road of light leading towards the sun. He smiled wryly as he was thinking about something did something happen? Noticing the change in Hajimi, Kaori called out to him because she was taking a shower inboard a while ago, her hair was damp. No, not only Kaori. Yue, Shia, and Tio had gone up to deck before he was aware of it. Everyone had taken the shower inside the sub that Hajimi took pride in. Their flushed cheeks, the damp hair stuck on their cheeks, and nape, made their figures truly captivating. The water from the shower room was set to rain right from the ceiling, so it wasn't a problem for the four of them to shower all at once incidentally, the reason why Hajimi was on the deck, looking at the sunset was because of the possibility of taken into the shower room if he was careless when the girls were about to take the shower, Tio invited Hajimi which gained approval from Kaori, Shia, and of course, Yue. Then, the four cut off the escape routes of Hajimi's refusal. Hajimi who will not embrace any other women except Yue, had clearly said he won't have a naked skin ship with other women however, the girls ignored Hajimi as they smiled. Leering at Yue who was blushing while making a flirtatious smile, Kaori and Tio who were pinning Hajimi from the sides, and while she had tried to put Hajimi unconscious using Doryukin from behind, feeling the impending danger of his body, Hajimi seriously ran away and went to the deck. But, isn't it a shame for a man to deny the placed meal before him? Hajimi thought that was a foolish question and shook his head, then he replied to Kaori I am just recalling a little about Japan. After all, the scene here isn't that much different from there, I see. Yeah, it really is. It is just like the evening sun I have seen in the sea before. Somehow it makes me feel nostalgic. Though not even half a year had passed, eh? That's because the everyday here is too eventful. Having seated beside Hajimi, Kaori was agreeing Hajimi's words while looking at the distance. She must be recalling the days she went through in Japan maybe because she felt the loneliness from the conversation of the two. Yue trotted her still flushing body towards Hajimi and sat on his lap. She entrusted her back to Hajimi's chest even though she must be feeling hot. Then, she began to watch Hajimi right under his face her eyes were obviously expressing she wanted them to let her join their conversation. Yue was feeling lonely, and at the same time she wanted to hear about Hajimi's hometown. Hajimi while inwardly knocked out by Yue's cuteness, stretched Kaori's cheek, who was sitting beside him, to scold her because Ahanya had appeared with only that, her mood became better which made Hajimi felt complicated. Hajimi thought, why would she do this much for someone who won't accept her feelings? Though he thought of that, he won't say it out loud. After all, it would be rude to her feelings if he did while he was stretching Kaori's cheek, and at this time, she had drew closer to him from opposite Kaori with sparkling eyes. She was obviously signaling she wanted to be cared, too. With his empty other hand, he stroked Shia's rabbit ear. Ia hey Tilda, Shia made a relaxed smile his back was leaned to by Tio. She didn't demand anything in particular, just quietly sitting back to back against him. However, he understood Tio was relaxed, and she entrusted her weight to him. 
It was slightly unexpected, since Hajime's only thought was to throw her into the sea if she makes a perverted demand then, maybe because she felt something from Hajime's aura, Tio's body shuddered and trembled for a moment while her breathing turned rough. Hajime's party cuddled close to each other above the vast sea. It would take a while until night time came, and the moon will begin to shine. So to kill time, Hajime began to speak a little about his hometown Hajime's story fascinated Yue and the other two while Kaori was supplementing him with a radiant smile. Time passed swiftly as they enjoyed the peaceful atmosphere and the sun had completely gone down to the other side of the horizon, and the moon had began to shine in its place thinking it was about the time, Hajime took out the pendant which was the proof of having conquered? Guryu and Great Volcano? From his breast pocket, the design of the pendant was of a woman hanging a lantern and there was a hole on the lantern, becoming hollow even while staying at a listen. Hajime had taken out the pendant and held it towards the moon, and also supplied it with magic power, but there was no change in particular just what should be done to the moon and pendant? Was what he thought while tilting his head. For now, Hajime tried to hold the pendant towards the moon. The moon could be seen from whole of the lantern design he waited for a while, but there was no change. Hajime not understanding what to do, sighed and began to try another method but at that time, change appeared in the pendant wa, the light is gathering in the lantern. It's beautiful Tilda. It is. A mysterious sight. Even though the lantern part is actually hollow. Shia was admiring the sight and Kaori, with shining eyes, agreed with her just as the two said, the lantern part was absorbing the moonlight and light began to accumulate inside it. In accordance to that, the hollow part was filled by the light. Also becoming interested in it, Yue and Tia watched the pendant Hajime held up even though I've also tried it last night. Hmm, master. It might be because it won't do if it isn't here, right? It might be just as Tia guessed. Before long, the lantern finished accumulating the light and the pendant was now clad in light. At the same time, a light shot straight from the lantern, pointing to a certain location on the sea's surface, what an exquisite production. Truly different from Maltese. It is. It really is fantasy-like, even I'm rather impressed by it. Guided by the moonlight, it was such a romance-like thing which made not only Hajime, but also Yue and the rest raised voices of admiration. The impression gained by Shia, just like Hajime and Yue, was strong as someone who had entered Mildes? Mildy Great Dungeon? The party didn't know how long the light would be released from the pendant's lantern, so the submarine immediately sailed, lead by the light the sea at night was dark. Or maybe it would be better to say that everything was black. And even though the surface of the was still bright because of the moonlight, they were lead into the waters and thus everything instantly turned dark. The light released by the submarine and the pendant was the only thing cutting through the dark sea the light, passing through the glass made from front crystal, a type of sturdy and transparent ore, in front of the submarine, was pointing at the bottom of the sea the location pointed was the rock wall zone of the bottom of the sea. Numerous distorted rock walls were joined to form a mountain range. It was a place the party had searched during the daytime but it resulted in nothing. But when the submarine approached the rock pointed by the pendant's light, a tremor began to generate it along with a strong rumbling sound the sound and tremor was caused by the rock wall that began to move. One of the rocks part was split in two, opening to the right and left like a door. The dark road lead inside was as though it was inviting one to the netherworld I see. So that's why we can't find it no matter how much we tried. How foolish of me to think we will be able to find it if we were lucky, there's no helping it, but it was fun. UA is right. Don't you think it was an amazing experience to sightsee the bottom of the sea of this different world? Hajime's shoulders drooped as he understood the search they did during daytime was in vain, but it seemed UA and Kaori quite enjoyed it Hajime moved the submarine and the party entered the crack. The pendant's lantern still had around half of its accumulated light, but it had stopped releasing the light. Only the submarine's light was shining inside the dark sea now I'm Tilda, this one had thought this since hearing about the bottom sea ruin, but wouldn't it be impossible for ordinary people to enter this labyrinth without this submarine thing? It's impossible unless one using a strong barrier. It will also be impossible if they can't control the air, light, and water current at the same time, eh? But, it is necessary to conquer? Guryu and Great Volcano? To come here. So I think people who are capable of conquering the Great Dungeon are able to enter maybe we are supposed to use spatial magic. Entering deeper on the underwater road, Hajime's party were considering other ways to conquer this dungeon without a submarine. They were impressed by the fantastic entrance, but indeed, once they thought about it normally, unless there were several top-class magic users, it was impossible to enter the dungeon. 
a troublesome point similar to the other great dungeons with caution, Hajime's party watched the bottom sea through the front crystal and at that time. Fuo ush tilde. Datawa? Datanich? Wawa? Kia? What the? The side of the submarine suddenly received an impact and immediately, the submarine was thrown towards a direction. Just like the time they were thrown into the magma's swift current, the submarine was turned around and around, but the party had already came up with a countermeasure for it. Using the gravity stone installed at the bottom of the submarine to increase the weight, the party stabilized the uh, I don't want to taste this twirling again Tilda. Shia's face paled as she recalled the time they got swept underground of? Guryu and Great Volcano? And shook her head to stop recalling it didn't we recover immediately? I already said it'll be okay from now on. But more importantly, just where does this current lead to? While smiling wryly at such a Shia, Hajime observed the outside through front crystal. The green light stone's light was circulating around the dark cave, letting him picture the surrounding. From what he could see, the party seemed to have been swept by the current into a huge round cave while operating the submarine, Hajime's party advanced by following the current. After a while, the far side stone installed in the stern caught innumerable objects shining in reddish black they seemed to be approaching us. Well, they are most likely demonic beasts clad in reddish black magic power, huh, shall we? When Hajime muttered, Yue, who was sitting by his side, was gathering magic power in her hand, and said in gangster-like tone, but she still looked cute no, let's use weapon here. I also want to confirm their effectiveness. Hajime operated the gimmick on the back of the submarine. Then, numerous pet bottle-sized torpedoes that had died Ankady's oasis in red, was launched. Hajime thoroughly painted them so they looked like smiling mischievously sharks because they were inside the swift current, the torpedo's propulsion could only move them to a small degree, and it resulted with them scattering like sea mines the submarine advanced ahead, and before long, the numerous demonic beasts clad in reddish black magic power with appearance of flying fish entered the cluster of torpedoes bo o o um. Dot grand explosions generated in succession from behind the submarine and a large amount of bubbles wrapped the group of flying fish look-alike. Afterwards, the bodies of flying fish look-alike were tore apart by the impact and the flesh and blood were scattered from inside the appearing bubbles, looking like seaweed thrown into a swift current yup, it has more power than before. The improvement is a success. Uwa Tilda, Hajime-san. Just now, there was something with eyes of a fish being swept outside. Shia, those aren't actually dead fishes. Once again it makes me think the artifacts Hajime-kun made are a foul. From then on, Hajime's party advanced while easily beating the flying fish look like they frequently encountered they advanced without knowing how long it would be at that time they began to notice the sense of incompatibility of the unchanging scenery. Hajime's party arrived at a place where the surrounding walls had been randomly destroyed. When they looked carefully, torn heads of flying fish look alike were placed between the rock walls with their hollow eyes looking at the sea. Hmm, isn't this the place we passed before? Seems so. Are we going in circles? Apparently. Hajime's party were going in circles in an annulus ring cave. They had thought the great dungeon was ahead of them so they advanced, but Hajime was doubtful that he had mistaken a road here, as if it was a normal bottom sea cave. Resultantly, the party now didn't advance according to the laid road, and carefully searched the surrounding for any clues as a result. Ah, Hajime-kun. There's one there too. With this, it is the fifth place. The party discovered several places inside the cave that were carved with 50 centimeters long crest of Melgene. The carved crest of Melgene was a pentagram with lines connected to each five points and the center was carved with crescent moon-like design. It was similar to the five places in this annulus ring cave for a thorough examination, Hajime's party approached the crest they first discovered. Because they were exposed to the swift current, Hajime took care in controlling the submarine well, there are five places with pentagram so if the remaining light inside the pendant is used. Muttering, Hajime took out the pendant he wore on his neck and held it before the front crystal. Then, the pendant reacted and light was released straight from the lantern. Following that, the light touched the crest and the crest shown it will be disastrous for people who come here using magic. If they didn't notice this immediately, their magic power would be depleted. Just as Kaori said, this RPG-like method would be too cruel for people who somehow survived only by maintaining their magic. It might be because the objective was to make them reach their limit in a different sense than Guryu and Great Volcano? Afterwards, three more crest in their own location was poured with light from the lantern, and the party arrived before the last crest. The light collected inside the lantern decreased when it was released to light up the crest, 
and the remaining light had enough for only one more usage. Hajime held up the pendant and poured the last crest with the light. Finally, a way to advance from this annulus ring cave opened. With a rumbling sound, the wall of the cave split in two. Not much happened as the party advanced into the interior, but the water was descending right to below. Then, the submarine was wrapped with floating feeling as it was falling down. Oh? NH? Yeah? Dot Nuo? Hau? Respectively, the five of them raised different scream. Hajimi was enduring the floating feeling between his groin. Then, the submarine hit the hard ground with a roaring sound. The severe impact was transmitted into the interior, and Kaori, whose body wasn't that strong, raised a groan. Kh. Kaori, are you okay? Uh, I'm okay. More importantly, here is. While frowning, Kaori looked at the outside through the front crystal, and unlike a while ago, the outside was not sea water but a cavity. Because there was no sign of demonic beast, Hajime's party went outside. Outside the submarine was a huge hemispherical space. When they looked above, there was a large hole, but they didn't know what kind of principle caused the water's surface to sway to and fro. Without any drop of water, it was swaying to and fro, and it was the place where Hajime's party fallen to looks like here is the real thing. Rather than a bottom sea ruin, it is a cave though, it's good that there isn't water everywhere. Returning the submarine into treasure box, Hajime urged Yue and the others to advance into the passage they could be seen inside the cave. But he called out to Yue before the party moved Yue. NN. With just that, Yue immediately created a barrier around them momentarily, laser-like water current attacked them like meteors from above. The laser made of compressed water was similar to rupture Yue used in Rise and Great Dungeon. If one gets hit by it, a hole would be easily created in their body however. Yue's barrier was extremely strong even if it was put cast in a hurry. As a proof, it easily blocked the incoming attack from above. Because Hajime promptly perceived the rise in magic power and killing intent, Yue who promptly answered him, the surprise attack was no longer a surprising one. Naturally, the moment Hajime called out to Yue, Shia and Tio had guessed the attack and was undisturbed by it however, Kaori didn't react the same way as them Kia? Dot the two sudden and the intense attacks made her instinctively raised a scream. She immediately clung on Hajime who was beside her I I am sorry. No, don't mind it. Sneaking a glance at Hajime whom she parted from, Kaori would usually blushing here, but Kaori's complexion didn't look good. She seemed to be a little depressed from exposing her disgraceful behavior when she clinged on to Hajime also, she was once again shocked by Yue's proficiency in magic when she was still with Kuki's party. Kaori also used defense magic to assist Suzu. She trained hard, and her activation speed was not inferior to a barrier master like Suzu. Even so, when compared it to Yue, her defensive magic was child's play she had felt that when Hajime's party rescued them from Orca's Great Dungeon? She understood, but she pushed her inferiority complex into the bottom of her mind because only when she could do that would she be able to stay by Hajime's side. However, the question whether she would only be a burden crossed her mind again are you all right? Eh? Ah, uh, nothing. There's nothing wrong, I see. Kaori immediately tried to deceive him by making a forced smile. Although Hajime slightly narrowed his eyes towards her action, he didn't say anything his action made Kaori feel a little lonely, but relieved at the same time. Then, she noticed Yui, who continued to block the reign of dread, staring at her. Her eyes seemed to see through Kaori's heart which made Kaori put strength in her eyes and stared back at Yue. Kaori would not let her feelings be laughed at like that time. After all, if that happens, the pretty girl before her who received Hajime's love would stop to recognize her as a threat that was something she wouldn't be able to endure receiving Kaori's powerful gaze. Yue smiled a little and once again looked above. At the same time, Tio fired her flame to burn the ceiling. With that, the culprit of the attack fell in a tatter it was a barnacle-like demonic beast. A lot of them were sticking on the ceiling, shooting rupture from the hole above. A physiological disgust inviting spectacle maybe because it was still an underwater creature, it was weak to flames and was immediately burned by Tio's flame magic, spiral flame. After defeating those barnacle look-alike, Hajime's party walked into the passage. They went lower than the previous room, and even the seawater reached their thighs. Ah tilde, it's hard to walk, should I get off? With splashing sound as they advanced through the seawater, Hajime started to complain. And so, Yue, who was sitting on his shoulder, asked. Yue was carried by Hajime because with her height, she would be soaked faster than anyone else. Hajime returned a gaze saying there's no problem while he ignoring Kaori's and she is envying Gaz. Then, he put his hand on Yue's thigh so she would not fall, 
firmly fixing her in place. Yue was also wrapping her hand around Hajime's neck. Kaori and Shia were sending even more and more envying gazes, but they were now focusing on another problem, an attack from demonic beasts. The appearing demonic beasts looked like shurikens. They moved in a straight line towards their target while rotating in high speed, but sometimes they also curved on the fly. Hajime smoothly pulled down her and unhesitatingly fired, shooting down everything in the air. Although some died with their bodies still intact, the dead demonic beasts which floated on the surface of water had a shape of a starfish in addition, having perceived sea snake-like demonic beasts swimming fast in the water below them, Yue skewered them using spear of ice, aren't they too weak? Except Kaori, all of the party members agreed with Hajime's mutter enemies inside a great dungeon were theoretically strong individually and became troublesome if more than one appeared. However, the starfishes and sea snakes were similar to the demonic beasts who attacked them in the sea once they got out of the sea volcano, or at least that week. Truly unbefitting of a great dungeon's demonic beast excluding Kaori who didn't know much about great dungeon, everyone was tilting their heads, but their answer would be shown inside the huge space on the other end of the passage the heck? As soon as Hajime's party entered the space, translucent jelly-like body blocked the entrance to the passage let me do it. Er yeah. Dot immediately, Shia who was at the rear, swung Doriuk to break the wall. However, the surface only scattered, but the jelly-like wall didn't break. Following that, the scattered remains stuck on Shia's breasts Haya. What's with this thing? Dot Shia raised a voice of confusion and shock. When Hajime's party turned around, the clothing around Shia's breasts was melting. The jelly thing wrapped around her clothing and undergarment, and Shia's voluptuous twin hills began to become more and more exposed Shia, don't move. Immediately. Tio perfectly burnt the spray jelly thingy. A little part of Shia's breasts where the jelly was attached to was swollen red. It looked like the jelly blocking the entrance had a rather strong acidity kh. There's more coming. Hajime warned, and right after they moved away from the wall of jelly, numerous tentacles attacked from above. They looked sharp like spears, but their appearance was similar to the jelly that was blocking the entrance honestly, the combination of Yue as defense and Tio as offense feels like a foul play. An impregnable defense and at the same time a one-sided offense. That's why Hajime could do nothing but mutter so. Seeing it as a chance, Shia was slowly approaching Hajime's side while empathizing her exposed cleavage. Truly sly, as she began to pleading with upward glance while blushing excuse me, Hajime-san. It's burned, so can Hajime-san rub it with medicine? Sai, don't you see our situation? Well, I think it'll be okay because Yue-san and Tio-san are unbeatable. Also. If I don't do some appeal in this situation, I will be overshadowed by Kaori San too. Shia said while approaching Hajime to show off the burn on her cleavage then. Bring the holy ground and healing onto this place heaven's blessing. Dot Kaori healed Shia's injury while smiling nicely. Atilda, even though it was a chance to get my breasts touched, she aggrieved while everyone was looked at her coldly hmm? Hajime, these jelly seems to melt magic, too. While he was giving the grieving Shia a cold look, Yue said to him. When he looked at it, he could see parts of Yue's barrier melting MHM, this one thought so. This one felt it was strange that the previous flame lost its force. It seems it even melt the magic power inside the flame. If what Tio said was right, then these jelly was capable of melting magic power. It was a strong and troublesome ability. Suitable for a great dungeon's demonic beast though it must haven't heard what Hajime thought of it in his mind. Finally. A figure of a demonic beast that was manipulating the jelly had appeared the thing appeared as it was permeating through the small cracks in the ceiling, halted in midair, and began to reshape. A translucent humanoid with fin-like limbs, and its whole body carried innumerable specks sparkling in red with two feelers like thing growing on its head. The figure that was swimming midair with its fin-like limbs was just like a Cleone. Well, a 10 meters tall Cleone was nothing but a monster, after all without any preliminary movement. Tentacles were shot out from the Cleone's huge body. At the same time, Jelly was spraying from its head just like a shower Yui, attack it, too. Leave the defense to me. Divine interruption. Using the derived skill, delayed activation, Kaori activated the divine interruption she chanted beforehand. Nodding at Kaori, Yue went to Tio, and together they fired flame towards the huge Cleone. Xiao also changed Doryuk into firing mode and shot at the Cleone was hit by all of their attacks and its body exploded and scattered in all directions. One hit kill, Yue and the other two raised a satisfied expression, but Hajime let out a warning to them not yet. Its presence is still here. Kaori, maintain the barrier. What's with this, 
The demonic beast's presence is all over the room. Hajime's perception abilities caught the presence of the demonic beast all over the room. Moreover, everywhere his magic I see was dyed in reddish-black color, as if the demonic beast was the room itself. It was a situation he had never encountered before, so naturally Hajime's eyes sharpened right after, as if to sense his anxiety, the Cleon that was scattered in all directions was regenerated in no time. Moreover, on its belly were the starfish look-alike and sea snakes they encountered and defeated. They melted while raising sizzling sound hmm, it seems the demonic beasts this one thought as weak were truly ordinary demonic beasts, and they seem to be this guy's meal. Master. It doesn't matter if it keeps regenerating. But where is its magic stone? Now that Tio San mentioned it, why can't I see the magic stone although it is transparent? Agreeing to Tio's assumption, Shia was now looking at Hajime, but Hajime had a troubled expression while he looked for the location of magic stone of the huge Cleon, Hajime? When Yue called him, Hajime scratched his head and reported what he saw, none. That guy doesn't have magic stone. His words made everyone dumbfounded H. Hajime-kun? For it to not have magic stone. Then, does it mean it isn't a demonic beast? I don't know. However, if I must say, that jelly's body, all of them are magic stone. My magic I saw that guy's whole body is dyed in reddish black color. Also, be careful since this whole room is also dyed in the same color. Or maybe we are already inside that guy's stomach. The same time Hajime told them about the shocking fact, the huge Cleon began to attack them again. This time, not only did the tentacles attack while the jelly rained down, but its feet entered the seawater and some parts of its body were fired like a torpedo. Hajime took out a black, large rifle from the treasure box. The large rifle had a gas cylinder thing installed where the magazine should be loaded, and also an unbelievably large caliber that was natural. After all, it wasn't a rifle, whoosh. Dot it was a flamethrower. The flame or in tar form made the flamethrower sprayed flame of 3000 degrees Celsius. It was not aimed at the huge Cleon, and neither at the tentacles nor the spray jelly. It was aiming at the wall that was giving reddish black reaction. The Cleon was left to Yue and the other two maybe because the huge Cleon had a mimetic ability, the wall seemed to be not out of ordinary, but the flame released by Hajime burnt it and peeled it off from the wall just like a wallpaper. Hajime was slightly relieved the one on the wall was not another huge Cleon however, the transparent jelly kept appearing from the cracks on the wall no matter how much he burned it, and finally it even appeared from under his feet. His shoe soles generated sizzling sound the attack on the real body by Yue and the other two was also increasing in intensity, and even the huge Cleon seemed to have finally gotten serious as jelly sprung up from the entire wall with a tremendous momentum. Moreover, the water level had raised before the party were aware of it. At first, it was around the thigh level, but now it has risen to around the waist. As for Yue, her chest area was already soaked by the water Yue and the other two had defeated the huge Cleon so many times, but the surrounding jelly immediately gathered, and the end of the fight was nowhere in sight it was a terrible situation if they didn't find a way to defeat it, and they would die by drowning. While their fighting power was being reduced, they wouldn't be able to keep besieging the huge Cleon. Even if they cast barrier magic and entered the submarine, it would melt unless they find a way to defeat it as such, Hajime decided to withdraw. However, all of the passages had been blocked by the jelly. Hajime frantically looked around. Then, he discovered a crack on the ground which generated a whirl I will at least recover us from this situation. There's also a place under the ground. Well, I don't know where it is connected to, so brace yourselves. NH. Yes Tilda. Understood. Okay. Receiving everyone's answer, Hajime. While turning the flamethrower around to burn the incoming jelly, used transmutation towards the crack. The crack was forced to expand and gradually, a deep hole was opened while still underwater. Hajime took out a cylinder with length of 15 cm and diameter of 3 cm. In the middle was the mouthpiece part of a snorkel tube. It was small oxygen cylinder. It was created using the ore imbued with spatial magic using creation magic. Thus, the space inside where the oxygen was put into, expanded just like treasure box. However, while he was making preparation in the listen, Hajime had prioritized the broken and lost equipment. In addition, it was hard for him to use spatial magic so the space created was much narrower compared to treasure box. Because of that, these small oxygen cylinder can only hold out for around 30 minutes setting the time limitation in the corner of his mind, Hajime repeatedly transmuted the water, and before long, Hajime took out pile bunker from treasure box once there was no more reaction on the ground. 
After fixing the anchor under the water, it charged Scree each tilde. Dot following that, he pulled the trigger to break the floor kabuo um tilde. Dot inside the water, a muffled thundering sound generated and spread with vibration in the next moment, water flowed into the penetrated hole with tremendous momentum. The seawater that had reached around the waist began to flow mightily all of a sudden, which resulted in Yue and the other three to be swept and thrown into the hole inside the swift current. Hajime desperately braced against the current and took out a gigantic boulder and numerous incendiary grenades from treasure box. Then, he threw them at the same time he was swept into the space below alongside with Yue and the other three behind him, muffled roaring sounds rang out. However, he was unable to confirm whether he was successful in gaining even a little time against the huge Cleone's pursuit. <laughs>